In this lecture, let's discuss about immobilized cell systems. So we will be discussing, it's actually just a brief lecture, so we'll be discussing about the reasons why we do immobilization and the limitations of cell immobilization. But first, we need to discuss what is cell immobilization. When we talk about immobilization, it's, it's the restriction of the cells within a defined space. So why do we need to immobilize your cells? So uh, it Immobilization provides high cell concentration. Well, basically, you are limiting their growth into, or rather, li limiting the cells to live on a certain space. So you have um, high. You need. You can have high cell concentration if, you, especially if they are attached in a biofilms, and it can. It allows you to reuse the cell. Easy reuse. So it eliminates the cost of cell recovery and cell recycle because the cells are immobilized, and you can just have, say, for example, immobilize them by attaching them to a solid um, compartment or a solid support inside your fermenter so you do not need to do fil uh, extensive filtrations in order to um, filter out the cells and remove them from the culture media instead you just uh, retrieve your um, that support and then reuse them or even just let it let it be and then your substrate the substrate that that exits your um, your fermenter is relatively uh, free from cells although not exactly 100% free from cells because cells tend to um it there might be some as uh, uh, escapees cells might escape from the immobilization but generally you have a relatively uh low cellular concentration on the outflow stream because all of the cells are already retained inside your uh, system because they are immobilized in a solid support so the high cell concentration and the high flow rate allows high volumetric productivity and immobilization might provide favorable microenvironment from the cell rather than having them uh, suspended or in a submerged uh, fermentation system so they in some cases they can also provide genetic stability now take note this is in some cases and uh, this may uh, cause, uh, give you protection against your damage especially if you immobilize them by trapping them in a certain uh, porous uh, medium or porous support so there is uh, the, the substrate the the nutrient broth can enter but your cells are protected against shear forces so therefore you can actually in, uh, introduce impellers in the systems in order to uh, increase or uh, in order to increase the mixing but uh, you are protecting your cells because they are within the confines of your porous support medium now to the limitations of immobilization. So the, the products for the immobilized cell system must be extracellular. So the cells must excrete the products. Why? Because if these are uh, the products are intracellular, so inside inside the cell, you need to get the cell first. You need to um, break them open in order to get it or get it. So that is actually one of the problems because since you immobilize the cell, aside from the cell wall and the cell membrane, you also have your immobilized support systems and the cellular extracellular matrix that you need to contend. And then diffusional limitation. That's actually one of the major problems with immobilization because since they are trapped in a solid support so the diffusion of your nutrients towards your cell is uh, limited so there, the the cells or rather your system must be well mixed and you must uh, ensure that the the nutrients in the bulk of the nutrient suspension must be able to penetrate inside your solid support for it to reach your cells now heterogeneity in the system is also one cause of limitation in heterogeneous systems it's difficult to control your microenvironment now this is a double-edged sword so you have in one side the microenvironment is uh, is can be uh, developed by the cell that is optimized to their needs so in one case you have a very good microenvironment uh, on another case if it's if you want a different microenvironment from the ones that the cells are want or have a tendency to do then you can have difficulty in controlling them cell growth and gas evolution can mechanically disrupt the immobilizing matrix so again uh, cells you cannot really stop them from growing so uh, when they grow large enough 
they can rupture open your biofilm or your immobilized immobilizing system or even they can produce gases that can uh, increase the pressure and rupture your immobilizing matrix now several ways for immobilization so the one is entrapment or binding of cells by physical or chemical means so when you entrap cells it's a physical entrapment which is the most common method for immobilization so you use porous matrices to entrap the cells for encapsulations you use hollow spherical particles bound by a semi-permeable membrane or so you can also use hollow fiber tubes and then the last uh, type of immobilization is adsorption or binding so there's a direct contact here but you should make sh uh, this makes enables or rather the cells must by themselves adhere to your support structure so they are um, unlike entrapment and encapsulation where there is your um, mesh or a membrane or a matrix that is between your cell and the bulk of the medium in adsorption or binding there is relatively no support medium that goes between your cell and the nutrient media. So there's a direct contact. So in terms of diffusions, it's better the adsorption. However, uh, the cells sometimes, it's a case of species because sometimes the cells, the, adhere, the, the adhesion of the cells to the support medium, to the support structure, is relatively weak. So there's a lot of um, escapees from that support medium. You do not really... Uh, you cannot or you will have a difficulty in maintaining that the cells uh, adhere to the medium and you can also be um, limited by the surface area of your support structure so these are the different uh, modes of um, encapsulation or immobilization so entrapment you have a matrix the meshes and this is your cells you can uh, or even if the cells can produce flocks or they can uh, produce aggregates by themselves so the aggregates are um, communities of the cells that are uh, flocking together. So this encapsulation, uh, this is encapsulation. So it's either inside the hollow fiber or inside your semi-permeable uh, beads. And then this is attachment or adsorption. So the cells are just adhering to your the surfaces of a solid support. So the, the limiting factor here is the surface area. So this is one way to increase the surface area. For passive immobilization, you have biofilm. So basically, active versus passive. In active, you are enhancing or you're the one that encouraging immobilization of the cells. For biofilms, the cells themselves are the ones that produce the matrix and they are naturally formed. So the biofilms are multi-layer growth of cells on a solid support. They can be biologically active or inert. They are formed naturally by the interaction between the cells and the matrix. So this is a biofilm formation. Usually see biofilms in wastewater treatments. So you have the film. So it starts when uh, cells adhere to a solid support. And then, of course, they grow into colonies there and communities. And then they produce uh, glyc uh, glycogen or not glycogen, uh, a carbohydrate-rich matrix. So the carbohydrate-rich matrix allows them, it's it actually... Um, Comes, becomes somewhat like a house or uh, well basically it's it's a home for inside the cell so it, it serves as a protection it encapsulates the cells it um, it houses the cells inside the biofilm and then when the cells inside grow to such a number it can rupture and so uh, the cells can escape and can go to a new or fresh surface to create a new biofilm so diffusion in immobilized cell systems, you need to consider several uh, factors. First of all, you have the dumb color number, which is the maximum rate of bioconversion over, it's actually the ratio of the rate of bioconversion to the rate of diffusion. So the dumb color number is the one that tells you that you need to increase or decrease your uh, diffusion or rather your mixing time. So if it's much greater than one, it's a diffusion limited system. So if it is it's a diffusion limited system, that means that your cells are converting or um, exhausting or um, consuming your substrate faster than the substrate can enter the encapsulated layer. So for example, if you have a, a cell, immobilized cell in a capsule, so that you have a porous capsule. Now, uh, if you have a greater, a uh, high, a very large dumb color number, that means you, the, the the cells inside the capsule are not uh, are not um, 
are not getting the amount of nutrients that they needed in order for your uh, in order for them to have well basically they are not getting enough nutrients because again bioconversion is them con uh, con conserving or con converting the nutrients to their products now for a high damp color number there is a lack of the nutrients are not able to efficiently reach the inside of your immobilized system in in order to reach the cell itself therefore you need to increase the rate of diffusion so if you have your damp color number is less than one you have a bioconversion limited uh, system that means you have a good uh, conver uh, good diffusion but it's actually the cells that are not functioning as fast as the diffusion are there so that means the, the 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 delivery of the nutrients are there is very efficient it's just that they are not uh, the rate of conversion is less than the rate of delivery of nutrients however it's usually the usual scenario is that you have a high damp color number so that means you need to increase your diffusion so diffusion limitations and ways to limit minimize them so for external uh, method you increase li uh, liquid phase is turbulence that means you have um, you increase the mixing time that is actually mixing time the rate of mixing or even interparticles so you decrease the particle size so that uh, you have a low or a higher surface area to volume ratio so that the, in the interior can easily be reached by the nutrient so the nutrients can easily reach the interior where your cells are located or you increase the pore size of your uh, encapsulating matrix so growth is associate, associated with thickness in biofilm so thickness of the biofilm is a good indicator of growth so if it's too thick there is a problem with diffusion of course the the um, the nutrients cannot enter or it will be difficult for the nutrients to permeate past the surface of your biofilm if it's too thick so some cells in some region may not receive nutrients and substrate and you have cell to cell interactions if it's too thin there might might not be enough cells to perform satisfactory bioconversion now what are the considerations in deciding a bioreactor for your immobilized system so the support matrices are fragile so you need to consider if your if your bioreactor um, design can uh, destroy basically your matrices so you this usually the design is with low hydrodynamic shear so it's packed column fluidized bed or airlift bioreactors now let's move on to solid state fermentation. So for solid state fermentation, it's the fermentation of solid substrate with low mo moisture content. So you have a range here of 40 to 80 percent moisture content. It's actually quite a large range. So depending on the type of fermentation you want to do, so you have this um, this relative range. So this this is usually applied to fermentation of agricultural products such as tempeh, miso, and soy sauce. So they are generally selective for your uh, selective to molds and mycelial organisms because rather than bacterial or uh, prokaryotic organisms the molds and mycelials they tend to favor the formation of biofilms and your um, mycelial growths so these are some so examples of solid state fermentations used commercially in japan so you have soy, uh, soy sauce you have hamanato miso sufu tempe you have cellulase citric acid and amylase production so advantages and disadvantages and disadvantages of your solid state fermentation for the advantages you have a relatively smaller volume of mash or reactor that is required because you have a lower amount of moisture needed you have lower capital and operating costs in fact most solid state fermentations are done uh, in a home-based operations so you have low moisture that is a low chance of contamination so this is a more selective because um depending on the moisture content again you have 40 to 80 percent range it's more energy efficient because you do not necessarily have uh you do not it doesn't usually require mixing so development of fully differentiated structures which is critical to product formation so because you allow this is mycelial growth so you allow uh structures um well, this as the structures of mycelials to propagate in, in your culture so it's um, you can actually, uh, in using solid state fermentation, those uh, development of differentiated structures are more pronounced. Now, disadvantages, again, this is heterogeneous. So, it comes with all of the disadvantages of heterogeneous systems. So, 
uh, the mixing might or might or might not be adequate. So on one hand, you you are not required to always mix them because mixing them too much will um, delay the development of differentiated structures. On the other hand, mixing uh, not mixing them too much might not give you a proper um, mix or prop the nutrients might not be properly delivered or even oxygen. So limited control of the pH and temperature is the same because again inadequate mixing. Then again, agitation may damage mycelial cells. So an example for the solid state fermentation here is the koji process. So in the koji process, one of the first steps uh, for producing uh, soy sauce, for instance, you have the soybeans and you grow the fungus in the surface of the soybeans. And this here is an example of the trays. So this is a solid state fermentation tray. The soybeans there are uh, fermented. So you have your mycelial growth on the surface of the beans. So this is solid state. So you, it's basically dry you are not it's not submerged in a liquid and this is your uh, the beans the soybeans coated in uh, the mycelium the fungus during their fermentation step so this is a uh, this one here is your uh, microscopic view of your fungus okay so that's an example for solid state fermentation okay so that's it.